Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday worship service. And once again, thank you to Catherine for a beautiful prelude. Our opening hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negeb and the plain, that is the Valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is portions of Psalm 90, which you can find in your order of service. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. Return, O God, Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you have afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, 
though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, had asked him a question to test him. Teacher. Which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, Lord, said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him answer to to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Back in the summer of 2011, several hundred people gathered on the State House lawn. Uh, it was a, a rally that was organized by Concord's Interfaith Council. And we were responding to hate crimes that had been committed the previous week. Uh, you may remember this graffiti had been painted on the homes of some of Concord's 
new American families, really cruel messages, which effectively said in no uncertain terms, you are not welcome here. But the people who came to that rally disagreed with that sentiment. We carried bright yellow signs that said, love your neighbor. And our message was unequivocal. We love our new neighbors. And we're very glad that you're here. Well, there were several speakers at the rally um, and each one of them was communicating a message of love and acceptance, but each communicated it in their own unique way. And some of those words were influenced by the faith of the speaker. Others were more secular in nature. There were personal stories too. Um, some of those were heartrending, and some were delivered in English so heavily accented that it was hard to understand, but the meaning was clear. And there were musicians playing guitars and singing or beating African drums. Well, of all the voices and the songs that we heard that day, no two were alike. They each had their own style, its own emphasis. And the speakers and the musicians ranged from formal to laid back, from liberal to conservative, from millennials to seniors. There's no way that any one of the participants would have been able to connect with absolutely every other person in the audience. How could we? We were all different. But the interesting thing about that rally is that people didn't come to it because they needed to be convinced. We were there because we already loved our neighbors. And we wanted to be with other people who felt the same way wanted to make a stand together. We may not have related to every single person who spoke. We, we may not have appreciated every style of music that was played, but we were energized and motivated by the fact that we were all there to support the same vital cause. As for the people on the other side of the microphones, the speakers and the musicians, they were unusual too. If you think about it, many people who get up on a stage do it because they want the focus to be on them. Actors and politicians and media personalities and singers and other performers, generally speaking, they're looking to be in the limelight. But an event like the Love Your Neighbor rally at an event like that, the focus shifts. It's the cause that's important, not the people who stand in front of the crowd. Their role is to help everyone put their passion into words and into music to help express a belief that everyone shares. You think about it, being part of a parish is a little like attending a rally. We may all be at different points in our faith journeys, but we're all here because, not because we need to be convinced. We're here because we want to be with other people who share what we believe in. We're here to support and encourage each other and to come up with new ways of demonstrating what we believe. Now, not every person will be inspired by every aspect of a worship service every week. On a given day, the scripture readings, the hymns and the anthems, the sermon and the prayers will either provoke a heartfelt response or they won't. 
depending on all kinds of factors. It's perfectly natural for there to be a range of likes and dislikes represented in our congregation. How could it be any other way? After all, God has made each one of us unique. So we come to worship together knowing that we may disagree on some of the details, but we're in full agreement about what really matters. Now that's especially meaningful today as we think about Jesus' two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Over the past six months, so many of you have shared with me your experience of deepening connection with one another, a, a sense of genuine care and affection for your fellow parishioners, some of whom you barely knew when we were still able to gather in person. And when I hear people describe that experience, my prayer for you is that it doesn't just end with a feeling, because it is a love that is God-given. Jesus' instruction to love your neighbor as you love yourself follows on from his instruction to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. When we do our best, to love God fully and completely. God inspires us to love ourselves and others in the same way. And that's why we can come together as a parish family committed to loving our neighbors, to supporting and encouraging one another, and to doing whatever it takes to demonstrate that love in practical and visible ways. Our certainty of God's love for us and our desire to love God in return, that's what spills over into our relationships with the people around us. From a human perspective, we can always come up with reasons for not loving someone else or not feeling genuinely loving towards someone else. But God-given love doesn't work that way. God-given love reaches out through us to everyone, everyone we meet. It rejoices in the variety of humanity and it wants the very best for everyone. Jesus makes that very clear in his parable that's recorded in Luke's gospel, when in answer to the question, who is my neighbor, he describes how a Samaritan cared for an injured Jewish man, despite the fact that Jews and Samaritans despised each other. God-given love doesn't make distinctions. Loving our neighbor means recognizing that we're all responsible for one another and that what we do to care for others will always come back to us in some way. That's why Jesus said, you will love your neighbor as yourself because we are all connected. How we look at one another matters. How we treat one another matters. What we choose to do for and with one another matters. The slogan that we proclaimed at that rally nine years ago was a direct quote from today's passage, but it could just as easily have been another statement one that we're hearing more and more these days as people grow in their understanding of what loving our neighbor really means. Black lives matter. 
Now, quite rightly, it's been pointed out that all lives matter. And Jesus wouldn't argue with that. But throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus focused on those who lived on the fringes. The people who were oppressed and despised and treated as disposable. Black lives deserve our special attention because for centuries, they've been treated as disposable in ways most of us couldn't begin to imagine. When we gathered on the State House lawn all those years ago, the white people among us couldn't fathom how it felt to have hateful words painted on the walls of our homes. We only knew that it was wrong. It was horrifically cruel and inhuman, and it happened because innocent families had the wrong colored skin. Millions of American citizens have been wrongfully incarcerated, murdered, robbed of employment and homes, undereducated and discriminated against in countless other ways because they have the wrong colored skin. Along with Latinos, over three times, over three times as many black people have died of COVID-19 compared with white victims, largely due to dangerous living conditions and inadequate health care. If Jesus were present today, I have no doubt that he would be part of the Black Lives Matter movement. That he'd be urging us to love and support our neighbors, all our neighbors. Because the love that we experience when we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind is meant to be shared. Especially with people who need us to show them that their lives really matter. Amen. I invite you now to join me in the words of the Nicene Creed as we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of our Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 4, can be found in your order of service. Let us pray for the church and for the world. 
Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we pray through our parish list, we lift the following people to you, giving thanks to each of them and asking for your blessing on their lives. Betty Toby, Bryant Tolles Jr. and Carolyn Tolles, Norma Topping, Rod Torbert, Denise Totten and Rick Greenwood, Elizabeth Townsend, Don Vandenberg, Tony and Anda Verderang, Elaine Verne, Tracy Vest, Austin Wang, Isabella Vest Wang, and Alexa Vest Wang. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially today, Ron, Kathleen, Edie, Steve, Holly, John, and Nancy. Please add the names of those you are carrying in your heart. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, especially Robert and Bob and those in whose memory altar flowers were given, Rob Fair, Jonathan Forrest, Harold and Dorothy Kirkwood, Bill Bonney, and John William Elsenau. Please add the names of those whose loss you are grieving today. May your will for them be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pray together the prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I invite you to offer one another a sign of God's peace, whether it's in person or over the phone or in a note or by email or via Zoom. Share God's peace today and every day. Announcements. Well, we have uh, our continuing uh, formation series, Transforming Questions, and that has uh, three separate Zoom meetings, Wednesday evenings at 6, Friday morning at 10, and Sunday afternoon at 1.30. You're welcome to join one or more of them um, and uh, just register through the parish office. Uh, we are going to be honoring those who have died at our All Saints service next Sunday. If you haven't yet sent to the parish office the names of those you would like read aloud at that service, please do so as soon as you can. And also Ashley Jane has asked us to submit photographs of beloved people who have died. And that will be, uh, those will be assembled into a photo collage um, again, celebrating All Saints. And another way we celebrate that important occasion in our church year is by baptizing. And we have two babies that are going to be baptized uh, next Saturday if it's good weather uh, or Sunday if uh, it's not so good weather on Saturday. And that will be an outdoor service with Eucharist, three o'clock Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Um, just be sure to register ahead of time if you'd like to attend. And uh, we will be, of course, having all the precautions in place. So be sure to wear a mask when you come to the service. But we look forward to baptizing Ian and Madeline, our two youngest members. And we're still uh, collecting donations for our Thanksgiving baskets that will be going out um, in the form of gift cards this year. So each family will receive either a turkey or a chicken, depending on the size of the family, and then a gift card for all of the trimmings to go with that, that meal. And we will shortly be collecting donations for the giving tree, again, um, responding to the needs of some of our food pantry clients with children. Um, and this year we will be sending gift cards to the families so that they can buy presents for their youngsters. So uh, that will be starting very soon. We hope you will contribute to that as well as to the Thanksgiving baskets. Oh, both of these ministries are so very important during this time of even greater than usual need. And let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We'll sing together the doxology. Oh, no. 
most blessed Savior, together with the faithful of every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, we desire to offer you our praises and thanksgivings. We present to you ourselves, our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may be united in you. And since we cannot now receive you in the sacraments, we pray that you come spiritually into our hearts and we unite ourselves to you and embrace you. O oh, Jesus, with all the love of our souls, come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts. Amen. Almighty God bless you today and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn today is, O oh God, our help in ages past. Going peace now to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.